Uh, good morning, Board of Directors. Um, as all of you know, from 2002 to 2007, the US lost 4 million acres of agricultural land to development, an area nearly the size of Massachusetts. And although there are federal policies targeted to combat uh, this loss of farmland, they are not nearly enough to deal with this problem we have here at home. And so I'll speak about three things today. Firstly, what I intend to find out on my upcoming trips to the EU, Japan and Australia, who I intend to find out this information from. Secondly, what opportunities I see in these trips for cross-contextual learning. And thirdly, what challenges I anticipate in translating this learning to ideas and strategies that are really useful for us here in the US. So firstly, in these regions, we intend to focus on three critical issues drawn from the problems here at home. Uh, we term them the three Ps place, policies, and people. So firstly, this very strong geographical notion of place and a battle for it. The US is losing its finest land to development, and we want to find out in these regions how they view the trade-off between development and farmland protection, or if it even exists for them in the first place. Secondly, we want to find out what policies these regions have to combat the development of farmland into other users and their impact and performance. And thirdly, the people, we want to find out the cultural institutions and cultural mindsets that are buttressing places and policies, essentially what the stakeholders of these farming communities are responding to the policies that, that have been developed. So who do we intend to find out this information from? We intend to look for stakeholders in business industry that are driving the interaction between farmland and development, and they will inform us most about the issues of place. We also intend to, look, to talk to the chairpersons of agricultural committees in EU member states as well as officials in the departments of agriculture in Japan and Australia, to find out about their experiences, their challenges, and their successes when dealing with farmland protection policies. We also plan to look at the people to whom these effects of policies are filtering down to, the members of the farming community, who through their individually unique stories, as opposed to just policy members and big data, but inform us most about the issues of people. We need these three Ps together to find out what was intended what is happening and what it really should be. So the next idea I would like to talk about would be the why you know, I would want to visit these three countries, what opportunities there are. Is it really a necessary, a valuable endeavor? And I would say yes, because these three regions are similar enough to the US to raise the possibility of opportunities for learning and yet different enough to guarantee these opportunities for learning. So the EU, US, the EU, Japan, Australia, they are like the US large industrialized nations. You know, but if you look beyond the broad similarities in wealth, power, development levels, and influence, a whole host of differences appear. They are located in different parts of the world, in the Western Hemisphere, in Asia, in the Southern Hemisphere. They have different geographies, histories, neighborhoods, contexts, and ideologies. And it, these differences drive cross-contextual learning for two reasons. Firstly, they greatly reduce the learning curve for looking at the effects of different policies by providing a test bit with exposed results, as it were. So instead of sitting up with, up, with all of us debating the merits and demerits of uh, increased intervention in farmland policies, we need only look at Japan. Highest producer support levels among OECD countries with overly protective subsidies that have driven average annual farm household income levels to 25 to 30 percent higher than the national average. And in Australia, the second lowest producer support levels among OECD countries and where a strong adherence to market-oriented policies has actually created a different result from Japan. And secondly, these I countries also provide us with different ideas that we might not have considered before. For example, the European Union's Common Agricultural Policy contracts with farmers for the development of, uh, for the provision of, ec of ecological services, which is kind of an alternative to the traditional notion here in the US, where farmland policy is essentially meant to, product, to protect the land for productive purposes. So essentially, exposure to these new ideas will provide us with a bigger toolkit to develop more robust strategies for farmland protection here in the US. But with these great opportunities also come great challenges, um, in the form of two, in two forms essentially, differences in institutions and differences in culture. So differences in institutions like political systems, laws, they essentially make policies you know, all but irrelevant in the United States in a certain way. So in the European Union, they have a greater acceptance of regional and international treaties and conventions, and this is implications for trying to transplant policies across the Atlantic. And culture, we cannot underestimate the influence of culture and history and policies. For example, after all, in Japan, the, the reason for the high levels of producer support are essentially due, can be traced back to the memories of food shortage that occurred after World War II, something that cannot be said of the US. So what may be popular in one country may be wildly unpopular in another. 
So what we intend to do on our trips is not to be transplanters of these policies back to the US. We intend to be translators, where we take the spirit and not the letter of these policies and combine it with our understanding of the realities here in the US to develop a selection of ideas that circumvent differences in institutions and account for differences in culture. That said, uh, even in the US, the institutions do change and cultures do evolve, albeit at a much lower rate. And even and within the country, country, cultures do vary widely. So even ideas that seem improbable for now should not be discarded but kept for future reference. So when the, when the time comes, we are ready to implement them. So in conclusion, uh, my trips will have great, a, deep, a great number of opportunities but also are fraught with challenges. But an appreciation that, policy, that differences in countries are the drivers of learning and not similarities. And also an appreciation that policy learning observations are just a start to a greater translation effort should allow us to reap the full benefits of our trips. Uh, thank you for your time today.